Thursday of this week, President Obama's nominee to head the CIA, John Brennan, will face the Senate Intelligence Committee for his confirmation hearing as the Director of Central Intelligence. One of the very first things President Obama did, you might remember, when he first became president at the start of his first term in 2009, was that he dropped the Bush administration's torture policy. You remember he did that right away? He issued an executive order two days after taking office to doubly, triply, extra ban torture in the United States. At the start of that first term, newly elected President Obama also wanted to nominate John Brennan to be the head of the CIA. But he didn't end up putting him forward. John Brennan ended up taking his name out of contention for that nomination because of opposition to him being chosen. And the opposition centered on the fact that John Brennan had been deputy executive director of the CIA during the Bush days, during the bad old torturing prisoners days of the George W. Bush administration. So you're going to have a brand new president who bans torture, but then you're going to put a guy who was there for the whole torture regime in charge of the CIA? Now, there was an effort made to make the case that John Brennan had been opposed to the Bush era torture methods while he had been at the CIA, but nothing was nothing in his his known professional tenure backed that up, at least not enough to save his nomination. And John Brennan withdrew his name from consideration that year, and he did not run the CIA during Barack Obama's first term. Instead, he got the world's greatest consolation prize. Uh, He became a very close White House advisor to the president, his White House counterterrorism advisor. And he was there at a time when the CIA and the United States generally were not known for torturing people. We are not known for torturing people anymore. What we are known for in the Obama era is not torturing people, but rather killing them. Uh, On on the same day that President Obama signed that executive order banning torture a couple of days into his first term, he also signed this executive order to close Guantanamo. Now, of course, four years later, Guantanamo is not closed, even though that was an almost first day priority for President Obama. He still says he would like to close Guantanamo, just as George W. Bush said he wanted to close Guantanamo. We have Congress to thank for the fact that it's still open. Congress has blocked the president's options for closing that offshore prison. But notice also that not a single new terrorism suspect, not a single new prisoner has been added to Guantanamo since President Obama has been in office. People have left by a number of different means, but nobody new has shown up since Barack Obama was sworn in as president. We have not been shipping people to Guantanamo, even though the president has not been able to close it. We haven't been shipping terrorism suspects anywhere, really. Mostly that's because we we haven't been capturing them, mostly. We've been doing something else. Since 2002, targeted killings, targeted missile strikes have killed as many as 4,700 people, mostly in Pakistan. The highest profile targeted killing, which was not by a drone, which was by a Navy SEAL team, was, of course, the killing of Osama bin Laden during a raid on his compound in Abbottabad in Pakistan. The highest profile drone strike killing was this guy, Anwar al-Awlaki, who's a U.S. citizen. He was born in New Mexico. He was killed in Yemen. But between those very high-profile killings, there have been dozens and dozens, ultimately hundreds of drone strikes under President Obama, most of them mostly unnoticed in the news. On the Monday of President Obama's inauguration, the same day that President Obama outlined this wide-ranging liberal agenda for his second term, that same day there was a drone strike in Yemen. And that drone strike on Inauguration Day followed drone strikes in Yemen on both days of the weekend that preceded Inauguration Day. So we had drone strikes on Saturday and on Sunday and on Monday, the Monday the president was sworn in. It doesn't really make the news. One of the most unusual things about drone strikes for us as citizens in a country that does them is that for so long, our country would not admit that we did them, even when we all knew that we did. That was the case. That did not change officially until April of last year, April 2012. And the person the administration put forth to do that, to admit that policy for the first time publicly, was John Brennan. So let me say it as simply as I can. Yes, in full accordance with the law and in order to prevent terrorist attacks on the United States and to save American lives, the United States government conducts targeted strikes against specific al-Qaeda terrorists, sometimes using remotely piloted aircraft, often referred to publicly as drones. And I'm here today because President Obama has instructed us to be more open with the American people about these efforts. Why exactly the Obama administration thinks these strikes are legal? They say, let me say as simply as I can, in full accordance with the law, the United States government conducts targeted strikes. In full accordance with the law. 
We know that they do think it's legal, but they won't say why they think it's legal. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. We are for free education. We do not give up. Expect surprises. Subscribe.